Welcome to Tech Insider Update for February 2023. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Kevin on co collaboration and content management. Hey, Tech Insiders. My name is Kevin Zollinger from the CCM team, coming to you not live from Brighton. Today, we're going to talk about having fun in teams, and I'll tell you why that's important. Let's go. Okay, so the idea that, that I would record the intro for my part of Brighton is important to me for two reasons. The first is that we want to make life at work fun. And it's never going to be as much fun as hanging out at Brighton on a snowboard, but there are things that we can do to make work fun, or to coin my term, funner. And one of those things that Microsoft has given us is a bunch of new emoticons. And as we expose our user community to Teams, let's make sure that they know that they can use those emoticons to express emotion and to, to help each other know how they feel. And, and it's a little tiny thing, but I think it can make a big, big difference. The second thing that Microsoft has done that's important to me is they give us now the ability to schedule a chat. And so um, if you're like me and you're always on 24 seven and you're always thinking about what's going to happen next, you can schedule that chat so that it goes out later. And I use that all the time. I'll be up late at night and I'll have an idea. I'll put the chat in and I will schedule it for the next morning bright and early. That does two things. It makes the person that I sent that chat to think that I am in front of the keyboard at eight o'clock in the morning, even though I'm not. And the second thing is it lets me recognize and respect their personal time. And so I'm not asking them to look at a chat at 11 o'clock on Friday just because I'm silly enough to work. Other thing that I use a lot is you can take shared content and pop it out. And so if you go to the top of this Teams window, there will be a pop out button. You click that and that lets you separate the video from the shared content. And I use that in almost every meeting where there's a shared screen. Teams Premium is coming. Not a lot of details yet about how that's going to work and what it looks like. Deleted chat and Teams should be live in all of your tenants. The one thing to know about that is that only applies to chats. It doesn't apply to team messages. And it only applies the message that you posted on your on your side. So if I send a message to Mark and I delete the message I sent, Mark still has his copy of it, but my copy goes away. Um, not yet live for everybody coming soon. You'll have the at everyone group tag in a group chat so that you can give extra notification to those people. In OneDrive, as you're sharing, you will get notified if there's a sensitivity label applied to that document. We're going to talk about Microsoft Peer Review and, and sensitivity labels are a part of that. If you are sharing content in Teams, there's a new presenter view that should be available. This last two points are, are pretty big. Teams 2.0 is coming soon. This is a completely rewritten copy of Teams. It's going to use about half the memory as the current Teams. It's going to use a lot less space. The download, for those of us that are on Microsoft, is going to be much smaller. If you're on a Macintosh, it'll be bigger because they're downloading a bunch of things that are already in the Mac OS but it's going to be faster, more responsive, and take less resources on your machine. I've always been annoyed at how much space Teams takes up, and so I'm excited to see Teams 2.0 roll out. Microsoft promises that it'll be out next month. My suspicion is that we'll get pieces and chunks of it, and it'll roll out over time. But watch for that to happen. The last thing is, if you happen to be using Teams free in your organization, end of life of that is April 12th. And of the 100 people that we're talking to today, that may affect one or two of you, but you need to prepare for that and be aware of it. You can see which version of Teams you are by going into Teams, clicking on your picture, and if you're in that Teams free classic, it'll tell you that. So be aware and, and take steps to transfer. So let's talk about Teams Sprawl. We've talked about making work funner. We've talked about Teams. Teams is a great tool, and a lot of us roll it out without any kind of control. What does that cause? That causes us to have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of sites that are in everybody's face. You'll get a lot of sites that are just one or two people that may be active for a week or two, and then they just don't get used anymore. Why is that bad? That gets you a bunch of content, a bunch of places. Uh, in some cases, you don't know what is where, you don't know how to find stuff. It also means that the people that are in your team's environment have a million teams trying to figure out where it is that they want to spend time, and that's it's just hard. How do you fix it? Well, you can lock it down and you can say only IT can create a team. That creates friction. I don't think that's a good idea. It's also fairly expensive. Um, 
what we have is we have two options for you to consider. One is Team Hub and the other is Orchestry. Team Hub looks just like this. This is a solution that we have developed here and it allows you to have a process where a new team creation request is approved by someone and, and you get to define what that process looks like. And so we aren't asking IT to create teams, but we are asking people to approve those teams before they're created. It also has this iconography and you can choose your own so that people can look at a team and know what kind of team it is. They'll know what the purpose of that team is just at a glance and using it here internally, we find that to be very, very powerful. The other thing that we have is we partner with a company called Orchestry. This is a view of their dashboard. Orchestry has a full life cycle view of what is happening in your organization with teams. It'll tell you what teams have gone stale. It'll tell you what teams don't have owners. It has a process where you can depreciate or, or deprecate teams as they do go stale. Both of those solutions are very powerful. I love teams, but I love even more the idea that we've given you tools and techniques that you can use to manage teams in your environment. Lastly, let's talk about some self-promotion. If you visit journeyteam.com slash blog or find us at journeyteam1 on YouTube, we have committed to providing for you information that will make your life easier and your users' lives easier. And this is me personally committing. If you'll find me on YouTube or find us on YouTube or find me on LinkedIn and say, hey, Zollinger, I hate this about Microsoft. I commit to you that I will see if I can make it easier. I can't promise that I will, but I'll commit to trying that. And then this, if we can make this a two-way conversation, I can leverage experts here at Journey Team to try and make your life easier, and we'd love to do that. The picture on the screen is Jonathan Duncan, or John as we call him, and that is a quick and dirty view through Viva Insights. You should go find that. You should watch it. It'll make your life better. And that's it for me. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Kevin again from Collaboration and Content Management. Let's talk Viva, and we'll be quick because we're running a little late. Um, I've highlighted four here that I think are the ones that are the most ready to get excited about. Engage and engage leadership corner is more or less Yammer all grown up. Topics allows you to teach people what you're doing at your company by magic. It may someday be powered by chat GPT. We know that that's the big hot new buzzword that we all want to talk about. Goals is great, especially for organizations that are doing OKR and Viva sales. Just seems like a tremendously good way for you to take the drudgery out of the day-to-day -day sales activities that happen in your organization. There are prices listed on the slide, so you can see what you might pay per person per month. In some cases, it's a sliding scale, depending on how much goodness you want from whatever Viva it is that you're talking about. We are spending a lot of time implementing it here and implementing it for customers. And so if you have Viva questions, reach out. Um, I said earlier that we'll respond to anything that you ask us how to do, and Viva's included in that. So if you have Viva questions, let us know and we'll post answers. Viva pricing is um, complicated. And so if you have questions about that, let us help you.